As we are all big fans of not only the Stalker series, we are also fanboying about the real stuff itself, the real exclusion zone. In this video we will explore every inch of the zone where fiction meets reality. This video will be divided into three parts by the three vanilla games. Notice some of these locations from the game are not going to be discussed as much because they are briefly influenced by the Soviet era infrastructure. Starting with the home where the player is born. While it isn't a very accurate depiction of a real location, it is a mix of existing points of interest. For example, take a look at this set of pictures from the game. You can see that the basic architecture of the houses in Rookie Village are inspired from rural dashas of the Soviet Union. These structures in real life are actually made of mostly wood with less concrete despite what you find in the game. Obviously in these houses used to live villagers that were farmers, which leads us to the next points of interest, the mill and the northern farm. These types of buildings were widespread in the entire Soviet Union and especially Ukraine, a country that had a big and important cereal production. People used them as collective farms. The last place in Carden that is related to the real-life exclusion zone is the railroad bridge, which is actually inspired from the rail bridge in Chernobyl plant, part of the industrial branch from Yanov station. The rest, like the military outpost and the car park, are fictional but have aspects related to the reality. The garbage is a very minimalistic take on the actual place, which in fact is better depicted in Call of Chernobyl's map, Truck Cemetery. Now, the sad part of Dark Valley, Agropram, Rostock Bar, Wild Territory and Yantar is that they are made up, but have correlations to the heavy industrial period. With propaganda murals and forgotten working beasts. A small detail we found in Agropom Underground is the elephant foot, which is actually located inside the CNPP. The last part of Shadow of Chernobyl, the Red Forest and the city of Pripyat are closer to reality except the Duga antenna, used as part of the Soviet missile defense radar network that looks quite different in the game. For those interested, Red Forest is the 10 square kilometer area surrounding the Chernobyl nuclear power plant within the exclusion zone. Pripyat city, as it is presented in the first game, contains the kindergarten the fairy well palace of culture the hotel the stadium and its specific grey communist blocks where workers from the CNPP used to live. The CNPP is one of the best portrayed in Shadow of Chernobyl, but because you are forced to rush to the last level, and the fact that there aren't many precise pictures, it is very hard to point out every difference and similarity.
The main visual aesthetic in the first part of the game is based on the wildlife of the authentic exclusion zone and the wooden houses scattered all around the swamps created in the absence of population. It's also well known the fact that Clear Sky has the most of the maps in common with Shadow of Chernobyl, except Limansk, the hospital and a very different version of Red Forest. Unfortunately, Limansk city and the hospital are totally fabricated, of course, with the same influences as the imaginary settings from Shadow of Chernobyl. Also the mine in the Red Forest is not real, but very similar to this Soviet coal mine. As in clear sky we start again with mother nature, then we get aboard the beast that is the dry cargo of Skadovsk. The area where the ships can be found is present within the game. We are surrounded by real locations that are the following Summer Camp Croc Complex Preobrazensky Bridge which was inspired by the old Dnieper bridge and one of the biggest and most visually stunning, the dock cranes. Arriving at Yanov station, which is a very precise and faithfully executed place for Call of Pripyat, including Zulu's tower, Next, we are going to talk about Volkov AA complex, Jupiter plant and cemetery factory, the only areas from Yanov that actually exist in Chernobyl. The Volkov AA complex was a missile defense system. On the territory there are barracks, the remains of a transport loading machine, garages, and a large missile capone here. Jupiter plant was originally a building made for cassette recorders and home appliances that had secretly manufactured semiconductor components for military and workshops for robotic systems. The huge machinery that you can find at the quarry is directly inspired by the Soviet mining equipment. In comparison with Shadow of Chernobyl, Call of Pripyat has added greater detail and furthermore a chance to discover a lot of unknown, or should I say, known territory. Besides kindergarten, we can lay foot in several new places, like the school, Laundromat, apartment complex, bookstore, hospital. All service center, Prometheus movie theater, Riverport,
and a few others. All of the mentioned above have a distinct Soviet vibe that gets under your skin. The creators of the game really put a lot of effort into making every nook and cranny astonishing. I hope I brought some new info on this subject, and sorry if I missed something. You can watch our previous video about what happened to Scar, but until then, good haunting, Stalker.